What's going on everybody? Alan Kiesel, Fatty Butts Barbecue. Thank you for checking in today. Today we're going over the Old Country Pits G2 Smoker, which I'm really excited about. I've had a chance to play with it for a few days and it's an absolute beast of a smoker. Now, to be fair up front, I did shoot some of this content a couple days ago when I did receive the smoker because we had some chainsaws going on, we had some audio issues and I figured, well, might as well at least get the content and then we could talk about it today. So without further ado, let's check out the video of the delivery. All right, so as you can see, this smoker is an absolute tank and I definitely, definitely recommend having someone help you get it off the grates because that was tough. So real quick, before we get into checking out the smoker and going over how to burn it in and season it and do all the great stuff with it, let's go over a few things that I think most people are looking to know and a couple of questions I got answered from Old Country themselves. So how much is this pit? Well, right now it's retailing for about $18.99 in stores. I've seen it cheaper some places, I've seen it more expensive some places, but that's the average that I've seen it right now. Is the exterior high heat paint. Now this is a big thing for me because uh, if you've seen some of my other reviews or if you've seen me use the Oklahoma Joe's, the Longhorn Reverse Flow, or any other cheap offset smoker really, for some reason they use really low heat paint on it. It bubbles up, it burns off, and it's ugly looking, it rusts away, and it's really, really hard to either season it or keep it from rusting. So this is actually using Rust-Oleum high heat paint. They say it does not bubble, and to be fair, I had this pit up to, I'd say, 475 degrees probably reaching close to 800 or more on the firebox itself. And I did notice a little bit of paint peeling, but it was only on the bolts, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. So, um, so far so good. I mean, the Oklahoma Joe's would have been bubbling up and peeled off and, and torched. Does it come with thermometers? Now you see over here on my pit, it has three tell true thermometers. They sent those to me, but it's not going to come with any thermometer. So make sure when you're ordering it or you're picking it up at your local store that you grab some thermometers because otherwise you'll have to order them online and wait around for them. Wood splits. So I've been using eight inch wood splits and I'm gonna show you those in a second. Uh, I've been getting them from Butler Wood. They sent me a few boxes to try out. Eight inch splits are gonna be the way to go here. Now you could use bigger, uh, probably two to three inch diameter is, is probably the max you wanna to go to as well. Usually rule of thumb is you want it to be no wider than the width of the door. So to me, eight inch, Old Country recommended eight inch. I've been using eight inch and it seems absolutely perfect for this size smoker, especially with the insulated firebox, which we're gonna get to as well. You're gonna see it actually will burn much better, much cleaner. And like I said, you could use larger splits if you want. If you have them on hand, you don't feel like cutting them down. But if you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy some, I would recommend eight inch splits. All right, and that's really much it. I mean, let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at this pit. Let's get it fired up. What we're gonna do is the initial burn in, which like I said, we've already done, but we're gonna make pretend we're doing it all today. So we have the initial burn in going down. That we're gonna run at about 400 degrees or so for a couple hours. We're gonna burn off all the oils. And I can tell you when I open this up initially, you can smell those oils and you can see them. So you really wanna burn this one in for quite a while. Then once that's done, we're gonna get a nice coating of oil on the inside. I'm gonna use Pam because that's what I have on hand right now. Sometimes I use beef tallow. Uh, any high heat smoke point cooking oil is gonna work, but uh, Pam is always the way to go. Quick, easy spray down. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest again, you're gonna see in a video I'm using Pam, but normally I would probably spray it and then wipe it down with a towel, uh, maybe a workshop towel so you don't get all the, the lint and dust off of it. But I, I usually like a nice clean surface. We avoid the drips, we avoid the puddling at the bottom. But in this video, you're gonna see me spray it. So if you want, and I do recommend it, wipe it down, get a nice even coating on the inside of it before you light it up and then season it in. All right, let's get to it. All right, so this is the oak I was talking about before. This is post oak, eight inch splits by Butler Wood. You can get it online. Shipping's actually fair. For the price, it's great. There are more expensive brands out there that I do not recommend. Um, just because, I mean, the quality of this is great. It's not kiln dried, it is actually seasoned, which is, you know, usually better. I, you know, there's always a debate, kiln dried versus seasoned, but I'm a big fan of seasoned wood. This is seasoned, it lights up amazing, very quick, burns for a while, so definitely check them out. I'll see if I can grab a discount code, I'll throw it in the description below. So let's stack them up and get this fire going.
All right, so now that we got our fire going, we're gonna wait about 45 minutes. That should let these really burn down, build a nice solid coal bed. Then we'll throw a few more splits on, crank the heat of this bad boy up, and get this stuff burnt off. All right, so one of the new features we have here is the smoke collector. So if you're coming from something like the Brazos, they don't have smoke collectors on them. We have it added here. It is not the entire diameter of the cooking chamber. Does that matter? I honestly don't know, but it's here. Does it work? Again, it's one of those things where some people say they're beneficial and they really help, and some people say they really don't make much of a difference. Either way, we have it. I have noticed though one thing. This is a new 33 inch in length smokestack and with the diameter of it and the length of it it does seem to have really really good draw probably too good in my opinion and i notice i have to probably close down the damper on the smokestack about a third of the way sometimes even half depending on what temperature i'm running this at in order to get even temps across because what happens is when you get the draw that's flowing through so quickly and the smoke collector and the smokestack can't get it out fast enough you start building up that pressure here and you get much more heat on this side of the smoker than you do on this side, even though the fire is there because it's pulling it through so fast and it's just building up right here. So from what I've seen, I haven't really been able to run this with the damper wide open like I usually do on some of my pits, but closing it down, it definitely doesn't have any impact. You still get clean smoke, you still get great burning fires, and you get nice even temps across this. Will that change as you continue to smoke on it and as it builds up? Maybe. But for now, that's what I have noticed about this smoker. So if you're using it and you're not seeing the same temps from left to right, try closing down the damper a little bit and I think it's definitely gonna level out for you. All right, so let's talk about this firebox because this is probably one of the biggest talks right now about this smoker and probably one of the things that makes it one of the best smokers out there for this price range. So this is an insulated firebox and that's really great for people like me who live up north, have more colder months. Down south, it's probably not as needed as much. It probably actually, could be a downside, I guess, depending on the heat outside and, and where you live. But uh, for up here, what's really nice about an insulated firebox is it really helps contain the heat. Now on cheaper smokers, lower price smokers, thinner steel smokers, it's gonna take a lot to really keep that heat going in, in colder months because it's cold outside, the metal's not gonna be able to hold that heat as much. So by having an insulated firebox, it's gonna hold the heat, it's gonna keep your coal bed, and it's just gonna make your overall experience of smoking in colder temps much better. All right, so here we have a quarter inch thick steel on the inside, we have two inches of mineral wool insulation in between, and then we have another eighth inch steel on the outside. So that's a total of three eighth inches of steel and two inches of mineral wool on the inside. Now, it does have this lip here. I don't know if it does anything. I am missing part of it here. I personally like it when the door is flush. It allows me to just clean out the ash much easier. You have an ash tool, you wipe it down. It is gonna block it. Not that much of a pain in the butt, but you know, it's just something small thing to think about. Uh, on this door, you have the damper as well built in. Now, normally on a smoker, usually of this size, I would probably leave the door cranked about an inch and let it run, but I've actually noticed that you can shut the door completely, leave this damper open, and it's gonna have some serious draw. So I don't think you really need to leave it open. You're probably just gonna waste heat at that point, but if you need to you know, lower the heat down because you have that insulated firebox, you put too much wood in, you can open the door and definitely bring the temps down inside the pit. Also, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there is a little bit of peeling. I did put a little seizing on it, actually, possibly a little rust starting so i'll have to hit that again but these bolts definitely uh the paint on them started bubbling once i hit it i did put a coat of oil on top i'll probably continue to do that really it's not going to matter as i'm using it as a smoker but for the initial burn in i really wanted to get the temps up to burn off that oil so that's probably why it's like this you're probably not going to have issues a couple coatings of oil season this bad boy up and you'll be good for a while so the only modification that I did make is adding this inch and a quarter ball valve uh, with the extension. I definitely, definitely think this is something that should come on every smoker. Uh, Workhorse Pitch just came out with it for the 1975 and it's really, really made my life a lot easier and I know a lot of other people's as well. Uh, so this allows you to obviously cut the flow of the drip if you need to. If you're transporting, if you're moving it, you don't want it to drip, turn the ball valve, close it off and it'll keep the oil inside. And then when you want to drain it, 
you can just open it back up. And what's nice is you can just hang. I got this from my Oklahoma Joe's little disposable pan inside. And you can just hang it right here on the ball valve, let it drip in. You don't make a mess. You don't destroy your patio. Uh, so this is the only modification I've made and it's probably the only modification I'm going to make, but I would definitely, definitely recommend it. I'll put a link below to the one I'm using. I'm sure there's others. Again, it's an inch and a quarter thread. Uh, you can find it on Amazon fairly cheap. All right, so as we've been sitting here and talking about this smoker, uh, I did just get an email from Old Country that I requested with the specs, just so I can be completely honest and get the latest version, uh, the latest specs for you. So it does look like on the Brazos, it has a main cooking chamber. The main shelf is 17 and a half by 36 inches. And on this new G2, it's 17 by 35. So, so just a minimal amount. I, mean, I saw a lot of reviews where people were saying it was a, a much, uh, much more significant decrease in size. Absolutely not. Very, very similar. So that's great news. Um, a couple things that you do obviously get on the Brazos if you're coming from the Brazos. And I know I keep mentioning the Brazos, but a lot of people, it's been one of the, probably the best grills of all time in that price range. I know people love it. I've had it. I loved it. Um, you do get the firebox with the cooking grate in it. That's a big step. Uh, there's a couple of things. You get the shelf. Uh, the front shelf, which this obviously don't have, which I do like, um, but my workhorse pit's 1975. That doesn't have it either. So I'm used to not having one, but it is nice to have one if they come with it. The other thing with the G2, which I didn't get to yet, is it has a removable baffle plate and tuning plate, whereas the Brazos had the baffle plate welded in that you couldn't remove, and it did put that hot spot more towards the middle. I personally took it out. I don't use it. I don't think it's gonna help. I think you're gonna have the same issues the Brazos had. I've never been a big fan of tuning plates. Uh, maybe in something like the Oklahoma Joe's Longhorn or the Highland, if you have one of those, those plates do help um, keep that temperature a little more even, but on something like this, I personally don't think you need it. I haven't seen any issues with it. The amount of cooking space that you get and the amount of heat coming out of that firebox is so minimal that you're almost using the entire cooking area. So honestly, I remove them. I recommend removing them. Try it out both ways, see what you like, but I don't think the tuning plate and the baffle plate is gonna make much of a difference for you. And it's nice that on the G2, you can take it out. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's, it's pretty similar. The smokestack, obviously that was an issue in the Brazos and a lot of people upgraded to that. And I think if you go on even uh, barbecueheadquarters.com, they recommend it right off the bat to go get it. So this has, like I said, it's, it's a huge, huge smokestack. The diameter of it is great, it's 33 inches. This comes on, it's bolt on. Probably will never want to remove it. It comes with it bolted on anyway. Um, but with the Brazos, it is a short stack. The flow is definitely not even close to this. So you definitely want to get that modded on and put on to, to get this. But this comes with it as well. Um, all in all, personally, I just think this is a way better smoker. Now, there's obviously a bigger price difference. And we'll talk about who is this for? Is it worth upgrading a little later? But um, all in all, I think this is probably the best smoker that you're gonna get in this price range if this is in your budget, if you're looking to maybe upgrade or get started. We'll get into that again, like I said, but uh, you know, this is definitely a big step up from the Brazos. I personally think so. Some people don't, I do. All right, let's wrap this up. So who is the smoker for? Now, I think this is a much tougher question. I see people answering it all the time and I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the answers I see. If you have the Brazos, is it worth upgrading to the G2? And I say yes. Now, I have tons of smokers and grills and all different types of cooking tools, and I'm always looking for something better. Now, if it's $500 better, would I upgrade? Absolutely. Now, some people say that's just crazy. You might as well go up to a $4,000 smoker or more, like my 1975 Workhorse Pits, and that's fine. If you have the budget and you really wanna step it up and get much larger space, and have a much better grill that'll last you for a lifetime, then I would recommend doing that as well. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't upgrade and spend the extra $500 or more from selling my Brazos or selling my Oklahoma Joe's Longhorn to get this grill, this smoker, because this is honestly, like I said before, one of the best smokers that you're gonna get in this price range, probably the best smoker you're gonna get in the price range. Usually you don't get an insulated firebox. The size might be a little limiting to some people, but I think for most people who are entertaining, who are cooking in their backyard, this is more than enough space for them. 
I think it's much easier to maintain a cold bed. I think it's much easier to keep your temperatures consistent. You're not gonna have the big swings. I walked away from this for quite a while the other day because I had something to do. I came back and the temps actually didn't change much. Now, if that happened in the Longhorn or in my Brazos, we would have had a dip and we would have had to recover and I would have had bad smoke. And I just know that's such a headache and something I personally don't want to deal with when I'm trying to cook and also trying to enjoy my day when I'm smoking. So unless you're using a pellet grill and you want to walk away and not have to worry about it, something like this with an insulated firebox is definitely going to make your life a lot easier. The barbecue is going to be much better. So yes, I would definitely upgrade from the Brazos. You also have the question, is it good for beginners? And I think it's an amazing, amazing smoker for beginners. Now, a lot of people say start with something cheaper um, that you have to learn and, and deal with. And I personally don't agree with that. You know, you go for something like the Oklahoma Joe's where you're getting an eighth inch thick steel or the Picos, you're getting an eighth inch thick steel. It's much harder to keep that heat inside. The fluctuations are much higher. You're constantly putting wood on. You can't really run a cold bed big enough to get those logs hot enough. So. I think it's more of a headache and I think, yes, are you learning how to use, to manage a fire and how to use a smoker? Absolutely. But does that mean you want to be doing that? No. You can go get this. You can start with this smoker if it's in your budget. Again, if not, maybe the Brazos is for you. I would say probably the Brazos with the smokestack extension, if that's in your budget, is the way to go. But if this is in your budget, then I think this is the way to go. It's going to teach you how to smoke. It's going to make your life easier. It's going to be more enjoyable, and it's probably going to make you want to continue doing it. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you got any information, if you enjoyed the content, please click that subscribe button, click the like button. I'm going to be doing tons of giveaways soon. We have a couple meter pluses to give away, an Oklahoma Joe smoker coming up soon. So make sure you subscribe to be notified. Thank you so much for watching today. Sorry about the audio issues and jumping around with the video, but thank you again for tuning in. God bless and have a great day.